and this is now running at idle speed it took me a second because I think I flooded it but we're sitting there at 10 minutes well over 10 minutes of running this thing it's actually now that I got the fuel mixture a lot closer a lot quieter all you gotta do with this one Takes it out of gear and puts it in neutral. There's your neutral setting. That little arrow is the crank. It chokes right here. This is actually a jet knob, or from what I've read, controls the carburetor jets for the fuel mixture. So before the guy told me the wrong mixture so it wouldn't do anything. And I think that's probably why he was getting rid of it. But once I got the right mixture down, it is, look, it's labeled right there, 101. And I can't believe I missed that to start with. But it's 101. So, 100 part, or for every liter of gas, I think it was what? A milliliter of oil, two stroke. It's four horsepower. Pushes along pretty good. Change the throttle speed by this little adjustment here. That's only part way up, but if, if I really crank this thing, it kind of, it'll empty that. That's how hard it's pushing. So. But yeah, when I got it, that fuel line right there, this is a new fuel line, ran me like 30 something bucks at Walmart by Atwood. It's a universal mount, so there's also a new gas can, by the way. Because my other one, where the adapter was right here, it had a fuel gauge in it, but the whole housing was cracked. And yeah, just fuel was going everywhere and I didn't realize it. You can still see a little bit of the residue down there. That's not water, that's fuel. So, anyways, replace the tank, replace the line, because the line was eating all the way through just like that housing was. And man, it was just going everywhere. My hands turned black. I still have like black stuff, residue that won't come out of my fingers. Not even with that orange scrub stuff. It's just not coming out because that's how much it was rubbing out. The bulb was leaking as well. I mean, it was just, it was a mess. But there's nothing wrong with the motor, as you see, which is the good news. I mean, this thing's sitting here at idle speed. Check that out. Idle speed. Where are we at now? 13 minutes. Flip that. Not the prettiest thing in the world, but I tell you what, for a 14 foot John boat that I just want to take the kids out and go fishing, that kind of stuff, this thing is great. All I'm doing now is burning out some of that old fuel that could have been, you know, residue and stuff in the motor. Not too worried about it, but, you know, I did have the wrong mix in there off of what the guy told me and when I have the trolling motor hooked up you see you can't see the mark look up down underneath there and boom that's my own negligence and my wife calls me oblivious all the time so that's that but yeah even rude four horsepower it's a 4e I believe this one was made in 1984 the guy rebuilt it it did a great job rebuilding it as you see no problems he just didn't know what the hell the fuel mixture was. <laughs> uh, so he missed it too. Matter of fact, on that uh, adjustment knob right there for the carburetor and the jets, he told me that it's twisted out, what was it, three and a quarter entire turns. And so that thing was way out there to run uh, 50 to one. Well, kept bogging down, shutting down, 
all that kind of stuff. Then I got to looking at it, saw it, noticed the fuel leak was getting a lot worse. Replace that stuff. Found the, uh, the mark right there for the actual fuel mixture. Turned that knob all the way back in. Now, because I added gas to this mixture, it's probably closer to 75 or 80 to one because I didn't empty and dump all that gas. Yeah, it was just a little over half full. So now I'm just burning some gas off, letting it run, and then I'm gonna add a little more gas, but because I put more gas in the mixture and got it closer to the 100 to one, that sucker is almost down all the way in and is going off of the adjustments that are marked on the motor. So yeah, it's a little picky on the fuel mixture. You gotta get it pretty close. But as you see, <laughs> man, this thing's running great. There's a little bit of a pain in the butt to get it started, but once it starts, you're good. Now I just gotta do a little research on how to get it to start a little easier if there's a, you know spark plug changes anything of that nature i'm happy though all i did to get this i didn't pay any money for it i just traded a canoe guy wanted a canoe i wanted the outboard motor just like this 14 foot john boat it's all covered up right now but 14 foot john boat and traded a rifle to get this thing guy had a fish finder with it that bilge pump was already included it's an automatic bilge pump if the water gets anywhere up towards that gray level right there then it pumps it all out itself and then once it gets all the way back down to the bottom shuts off so I've got that wired into two batteries it had a 29 series deep cell battery that came with it there's the fish finder right there I have it unmounted at the moment got that set up so I can detach it from the front uh, you see these wires going around he had cut the uh, transducer cable right here but fortunately you know I know what I'm doing when I'm repairing those so the transducer still the same one instead of buying a new one he cut it about right here so I had just enough cable to work with and fix it this trolley motor this back here is my backup while I get used to this motor <laughs> that was on my canoe I had a 17 foot canoe that I traded for the outboard and yeah, this trolling motor, I got it brand new. I know there's nothing wrong with it. I babied the mess out of it, so you know, that that's always going to be my backup, you know, especially with an old motor like this. But this also did come with an even rude uh, bow mount trolling motor. It's got a deck built up front. Also got spotlight for you know going out at night, night fishing, duck hunting, whatever you need to do, and get out where you need to go. It's also got the nav lights. Nothing in here was wired up. He cut all the wires out and left them balled up in here. He hooked positive to negatives and negatives to grounds and uh, grounds to positives and, you know, was crossing cables, everything. A lot of stuff was backwards wired. He didn't know what he was doing, so that's why he got rid of this thing for so cheap. He didn't want to deal with rewiring it. Whereas, like I said, I got a little electrical knowledge, too, uh, just from over the years. And I got everything working. Everything on this boat works. They even have a DC power outlet that came on it. It works fine too. You know, he had cut the cables off of that sucker. So I don't know what he was thinking, but I got a good deal. Took my wife out on this thing the other day, and we didn't, uh, you know, with the two of us in there, not a drop of water got in this boat. And this thing was made in 1969. I tell you what, folks, they do not make these boats like they used to. Doesn't have a brand name on it. If you look down here in Georgia, like they recognize that when you go to uh, register these boats that anything before 1972 it was very typical for them not to have the labeling inside for you know weight whole number all that kind of stuff uh, and so this one in 1969 this whole street of that it doesn't have a whole number so uh, we had to get numbers issued from the state of georgia so it, all that but that was like it's a 14 footer so it's 35 bucks and everything's taken care of and it was previously registered by the previous owner so it's a very easy transfer uh, no hassle did it on my phone you know this i could not beat the deal that i got for this i just traded a mosin nagant yes i said a mosin nagant a 9130 for the boat and a canoe for the motor and then everything else 
the only thing I bought to go with it that I didn't already have or didn't come with it, gas can, fuel line. That's all the money I've had to put in this thing. Very, very fortunate and blessed for that. So now I can take my kids out fishing on the water, save myself some money. I'm happy. So, anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. That's an Evenrude 4E. Uh, it's a 1984 model with an outboard motor. As you see, you know, this video has been 10 and a half minutes. I'm sitting at over 20 minutes running this sucker. No issues. And it's at idle speed. I crank it up one last time before you go. Little smoke because it's still got a little bit, a little bit of high oil concentration in the in the gas mix. But yeah. No problems. All right, y'all. I'm out.